A long time ago, when many of the hentai enthusiasts of today were still in their anime enthusiast infancy, there were actually player covenants in Dark Souls 3. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, people actually gave up their individuality for the sake of a larger group. People actually dressed up, shared a sense of camaraderie, and worked together. Now, for you players that have just jumped on the A train here recently, that might be hard to believe, because the game is a morally decrepit wasteland at the moment. Just a cesspit of toxicity and people trying to stab each other in the back. And personally, I love it. I really like the game that way. But once upon a time, people actually were together. It's actually one thing I think Dark Souls 2 did better than Dark Souls 3, was the PvP player covenants, because it featured ones like my personal favorite, the Rat Covenant, because I'm a scumbag. But as hard as it may be to believe, people actually used to work together in this game. Uh, Dark Souls 3's PvP covenants featured the Watchdogs of Farron and the Aldrich for the longest time, all the way up until the final DLC where they introduced the Spears of the Church, which mostly just served to pull unsuspecting host into a boss fight mechanic. Which is really like someone going to the carnival, getting in line for a ride, and then being handed the controls to say, here you go champ, have fun. So what uh, people did to counter this was they actually made their own covenants, PvP player covenants. People that came together under one purpose to get something done. And I thought it'd be a fun idea to go down memory lane and talk about these a little bit for some of the newer players that may have missed them, so let's do it. So the first group of fedora tippers I want to talk about here today are the Bloodshades. You can't talk about PvP covenants without talking about the Bloodshades. They were by far and away the most prolific and widespread of all the player covenants I'm going to talk about here today, and not without good reason. The Bloodshades were a player covenant formed by Peeve Peeverson with the goal of countering the gankers in Gank City by using the Bleed Effect. For all of you youngsters that don't know, the Bleed Effect in Dark Souls 3 used to be a lot stronger than it is today. It used to be that you could punch a host for maybe a few seconds and then just watch that bleed proc pop their chair and it was just mwah, chef's kiss, such a really strong stats effect that got nerfed into the ground years later. The blood shades were also all about being ironically edgy, which if you're being ironically edgy and no one could tell it's ironic, it's just being edgy, but that's perfectly okay because melodramatic multiplayer is as essential to the soul's experience as rolling, so that's no big deal. But the Bloodshades also had this sort of modus operandi with a bunch of secret handshakes and gestures. But the main thing, the main thing was getting that bleed proc up. And that meant using the Warden Twin Blades, Karthus Weapons, the Brigand Daggers, and more Rouge than a slut from the 70s. You also had to have Bloodshade in your name. Personally, I was Bloodshade Dink. And everyone also wore this sort of uh, funky looking cape deal that uh, Peeve really liked, I guess. And the Bloodshades were a really good thing going for a really long time, but a couple things arose to sort of negate how good they were. The main thing being Bleed being nerfed by FromSoft. On top of that, just sort of fatigue from doing the same thing in the same place all the time, reducing their numbers, and the rise of other player covenants that were made specifically to counter them. The Bloodshades mission statement was really just to cut down the number of gank squads running around Gank City, and if you'd like to see just about how effective they are, go to Gank City today and tell me how many squads you see versus how many Bloodshade players you see. But one thing did arise from the fall of the Bloodshades, and that was the rise of a new subgenre of player covenant, the Frost Shades. That's right, whether you were just too much of a hipster to go with the Bloodshade name, you preferred Frost over Bleed, or maybe you joined the game after using Bleed over Frost was negligible, the Frost Shades might have been for you. This shit twister of a covenant was almost identical to the Bloodshades, except they were less unified, less widespread, and less effective. This footnote to Dark Souls history will only be remembered by a few people that ever played, but they were around, and I still remember them, so. Big looks. I just punched my mic, giving my TV a thumbs up. Let's get on to the next covenant. Now, the next group of dildo enthusiasts I want to talk about are the overly aggressive Hallmonders that are the Crusaders. The Crusaders were the brainchild of Peeve's friend Ouroboro and were made as a direct counter to the Bloodshades. Their whole meme was that they wore Crusader gear, they used Jesus Juice, aka Miracles and Lightning, they praised the sun, poured Sunny D over themselves in the shower, and were just basically themed gank squads. These were the same type of dudes that buy crusader armor and talk about retaking Jerusalem, but then have to hide their stiff upright body pillows in their closets from their mothers. 
But yeah, that's basically the covenant. They were just a counter to the Bloodshades, and it was really fun watching them all have giant nerd battles in the center of Gank City. I kind of miss it in a way, but yeah, that's the Crusaders. Keeping with the theme of pretending that your ancestors weren't Neolithic farmers that got their booties plundered by the Vikings or the Groove Crusaders, the Groove Crusaders were started by Young Maestro, and their whole theme was invading in the Dank Blood Armor set in Arch Dragon Peak. The tragedy is that these guys were typically the cooler invaders you would find, but they were so few and far in between because it's so hard to get more than one person in Invasion Arch Dragon Peak. And on top of that, it's just a really niche little covenant to know about, so... The tragedy, the lament of the coolest player covenant, probably. Now, the next couple groups of toe suckers, I'm just gonna kind of all bundle up together because there's really not a whole lot to talk about. I really don't have footage from a lot of these because they're either so old that I can't find any videos of them actually in action, or there just never were any videos and they only really existed on Reddit threads and in-game. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is not really a player covenant, but they've become so widespread I feel like they should be. I'm just going to call them the trolls. I always call them the fighter PLs. And it's the dudes that run up to you in the thrallhood after watching a fighter video with a cestus and a broadsword, swing three times, throw three parries, and they spontaneously die of heat death or something. These guys will never get a kill, but something will always kill them without fail. It's really impressive. Uh, the next dudes up I want to talk about are the Firekeeper cosplayers, the ones that will not attack you, but just follow you around the entire time, waiting to give you the Dark Wraith kiss. Um, another little niche player coming are the guys that dress up with the pig fashion, the pig shield, and their only objective is to die right in front of the host. I don't know what like causes the kamikaze syndrome to trigger in them when they play this game, but they do exist. Um, another one I want to talk about is the Ladder Covenant. The dudes that use the Ring of Fap glitch on the ladders in Gank City and kick people down them. I think this was started by Revion. Revion? I don't, I don't know how to say his name. But, um... Yeah, that's another little player covenant, I guess. And, yeah, there's a couple other ones, but like I said, they're so niche and small. There's only a couple people doing them, I believe. That's all the major and minor ones that I can remember from back in my heyday of playing this game. And I hope all of you have enjoyed this walk down memory lane with me. So, um... Yeah, that's it for this one. See ya. Mm -hmm. I'm about to jump on your horse, Clem. <laughs> <Whoa! laughs> <laughs> <laughs> sure. Alright. Uh, you gotta record that one.